jump into our first content block, which is looking at algebra. We're going to start with some year 11 content that you are assumed to know. So this is a quick note that I said before, you might not have realized it will be examining the HSC, but it definitely can be and it will be. So we're going to recap two parts of the year 11 um, syllabus from algebra. We're going to look at formulae and equations and we're going to look at linear relationships. Okay, so formulae and equations. You should be confident so far with the basics of algebra. Now, what does this mean? We kind of have two things here that I want you guys to be thinking about. The first one is substituting a number into an algebraic expression or equation. And the second is changing the subject of the formula. These are two foundational aspects of algebra that will form the basis of a lot of questions you'll receive in the HSC and in year 12. Just because they're prelim knowledge doesn't mean they won't form the basis of those questions. We're going to have a look at some examples. So substitution. Substitution, if you don't remember from year 11, if you don't remember from year 11, is when you take one part of a formula, let's say we have five equals x plus two, and you are given a piece of information and you substitute it into the formula. So x equals three. Let's have a look at this example question. Given that i equals three over two times m times r squared, what is the value of i if m equals 26.55 and r equals negative 3.07, correct to two decimal places? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my formula. i equals 3 over 2 times m, which is 26.55 times r, which is negative 3.07 squared. And all I need to do from there is put that into my calculator. So 3 over 2 times 26.55 times negative 3.07 squared. And I get negative 375.35 to the nearest. Well, it's 0.346, but I'm going to round up to 35. We can see it's under there. Um, and because we need to put brackets in here, when we put that into it, sorry, I put it into my calculator, but it didn't draw the brackets on. We should have 375.35. So it's important that you separate out things like this, the times and the negative, otherwise you'll get the incorrect answer. And you can also put the squared on the outside of the brackets as well. And like we said, it was 346, so we need to round to 35. Okay, example question. We have make y the subject of the following equation. So this is the second part. That was substitution. This is changing the subject of the equation. When we change the subject of the equation, I first want to identify what the subject is. So say we have the equation y equals mx plus b, which hopefully you're familiar with by now. The subject of an equation is the answer, the part of the equation that is found with the equation. So the subject is usually the shorter side. I can't think of an example where it would be the longest. Um, and this is a very weird question. And when you're asked to change, they're going to say, make something the subject of the equation. So put it on the smaller side of the equal sign, basically. Make y the subject of the following equation. So step number one, what is the current subject? The current subject is negative 2x. We want to make y the subject of the equation. So negative 2x minus 3y plus 4. The first thing I'm going to do is move the easiest part of my equation over. We're going to do that by subtracting 4 from both sides. So now we have negative 2x minus 4 equals 3y. Now if I want to get y on its own, we can't leave it next to a 3. We have to get y by itself. I'm going to do that by dividing each side by 3 which leaves me with y equals negative 2x minus 4 over 3. And if we, oh, I don't have that um, formula in there or that working out. But as we can see here, using fractions instead of the division sign like this makes it a lot easier. So that is what our formula, uh, that is what our example would look like once we've changed the subject. Another thing we're going to have a look at with year 11 content is our linear relationships. So when we did year 11 in prelim, we learned about the two forms of equations that we have to represent a line. 
The first is y equals mx plus c. So this is point gradient form. It's telling you that a point on the line is 0, c. This is the y-intercept. So remember, our linear looks like this. This is our y, and it's 0, something. So it's on this part of the x-axis, but it's going in at some point on the y. It's also telling us the gradient of the line, which is if this is our line, this is our gradient, how steep it is. If it's a really steep line, if it's a really shallow line, if it's almost vertical, if it's almost horizontal, whatever it is. So AX plus BY plus C equals zero. This is the second form. This is a general form. So it's much easier to graph lines if they're in the first form, which is basically the only one you actually end up using, which is why it's important to know how to change the subject because sometimes we get them in the general form and we have to put them in the point gradient form. So for example, solve 7x minus 4 equals 32. We're going to jump back to some questions now. So I know we've got the working out here, but the first thing I would do, 7x minus 4 equals 32, is I would subtract, uh, add 4 to both sides to get 7x on its own. Now that I have 7x equals 36, I'm just going to divide each side by 7 to get x on its own. x equals 5 0.14. We have another one here. For example, solve 8x minus 9 equals 79. How am I going to do this? Same thing as before. 8x minus, that's a horrible x, sorry guys, minus 9 equals 79. We're going to add 9 to both sides to get 8x on its own. 87. And then we're going to divide each side by 8 to get x on its own. So x will equal 87 divided by 8, which is 10.875, which we can round up to x equals 11. We can also deal with linear equations and substitutions, those two things we just spoke about at the same time. So given that y equals 6x minus 3, Find x when y equals negative 18. So how do we do this? y equals 6x minus 3. How are we going to find it when y equals negative 18? So we're going to substitute negative 18 into our formula. So y equals negative 18, which then equals 6x minus 3. So now we want to find what x is. The first thing I'm going to do is move my 3 over by adding 3 to both sides. So add 3 here and it ends up cancelling itself out. Add 3 here and I end up with negative 15 equals negative, or it just equals 6x, sorry. And now I just need to divide each side by 6 to get what x equals, which we get x equals, now you can write negative 2.5 like I've written over here, or you can write 2.5. Here's another example, which is substitution and linear relationships together. Given y equals 7x plus 11, find x when y equals negative 5. So we're going to substitute in our value, which is y equals negative 5. We're going to put it there, equals 7x plus 11. Now, what was our first step? We're always going to move the number that doesn't have a pronumeral. It's the easiest to move, which is 7x has a pronumeral. 11 is a whole number by itself. We're going to subtract 11 from each side. Negative 5 minus negative 11 is negative 16 equals 7x. And we just divide each side by 7. Negative 16 divided by 7. x is equal to negative 2.28, or we can just write 2.29 to round up. Um, given that, hang on. Oh, let me double check my working here. Negative 5 plus negative. Yeah, negative 5 minus negative 11, negative 16 equals 7x divided by 7. Yeah, there's an error with the working out on this one. So I think, go with the one I've just written down. I think what would have happened is the answer is probably written without the negative 16. The last part of... Um, formulary and equations from year 11 that we're going to cover today is travel calculation. So this is our whole speed distance time stopping distance. Now all of these things may be on your formula sheet. Now when we have a look at it, 
they're really not. Um, they might be on your formula sheet for certain things in your like internal exams, but they're not going to be on this final formula sheet. So you do need to know them. So this triangle, anytime you see a red rectangle, it, it's very important. You need to understand what's in it. This triangle is your key to remembering speed, distance, and time calculations. So it goes as follows. Anything up here, so this is representing a fraction. This is representing a times. So speed is going to be distance divided by time. Distance is going to be speed times time. And time is going to be distance divided by speed. Following, very important. I'm gonna give you guys a second to screenshot that. Okay, let's have a look. First thing I'm gonna do on any question that um, is about distance, speed or time is I'm going to come here and I'm going to draw my triangle. Distance, speed, time. A car travels 86 kilometers over 1.5 hours. What was its average speed? So speed is equal to distance divided by time. Our distance was 86 kilometers. Our time was 1.5 hours. Therefore, the average speed, 57.3 kilometers per hour. We would likely represent that as 57 kilometers per hour. Another example, let's draw our triangle. A person runs for two hours at 4.3 kilometers per hour. What distance did they travel? Distance is equal to speed times time. Two hours times our time, sorry, times 4.3 kilometers per hour, which is our distance, is going to give us 8.6 kilometers. What distance did they travel? 8.6 kilometers. Uh, a car can travel 80 kilometers an hour. How long will it take to travel 56 kilometers? Let's go distance, speed, time. Time is distance over speed. A car can travel 80 kilometers an hour. How long will it take to travel a distance of 56 kilometers? We have to divide by the 80 kilometer an hour speed. We get 0.7 hours. So you would write roughly 42 minutes. How do we get down to that? You can just do 0.7 times oh, times 60, which would give you 42. It's very important to always remember there's only 60 minutes because a lot of students get that wrong and they go with the 100 and then you write down the wrong minutes. Okay.